step response for parallel RLC circuits, and we're going to set it up this way. We have, let's say, a current source here, and we'll put a switch right after it. And this switch is closed, but is open at T equals zero. And then in parallel with that, we have capacitor, inductor, and resistor. And they all are going to have the same voltage across them, resistor, inductor, capacitor. And let's go ahead and identify these currents. That's I sub C, uh, I sub L, I sub R. Okay, now the switch is originally closed. Uh, there and the current is flowing, but because the switch is closed right next to the uh, uh, to this current source here, uh, all of the current is going to be passing through that. Let's call this current capital I. It's a fixed current; doesn't change over time. There's essentially a short circuit across the current source, uh, so there's going to be initially zero current through each of these elements here. But at t equals zero, the switch is opened no longer short circuit, and now uh, currents can begin to flow. So let's do KCL uh, for the top node. Uh, I sub C plus I sub L plus I sub R uh, has to equal I. So that's the top essential node up there, and that's just KCL for the top essential node. Let's uh, go ahead and simplify or, or substitute in for each one of these. Uh, for example, I sub C, that is C dvdt. Now for I sub L, I'm just going to leave that as I sub L for the moment. And then uh, for I sub R, that's V over R, and all that is equal to I. Okay, now I want to pause just for a minute and look at something with just this equation right here. I want you to notice that I could write I sub L is equal to big I minus V over R minus C dV dt. Now, that's just a relationship that should hold for any time whatsoever. So keep that in mind right there because uh, we may return to this later. That's just a relationship you, you need to keep in the back of your head. At this stage though, here's what I want to do. I want to write this a little bit differently than I have before. I want to write it in terms of I, specifically I sub L. Now you know that V equals L di dt. That holds for the inductor. Everything has the same V, so this I is specifically I sub L. Now if I take a derivative of that, that's dV dt, uh, that's going to be L times the second derivative of I sub L dt squared. So let's substitute these two things in for up here. And when we do that, we're going to end up with C L d squared I dt squared plus I sub L plus, now this is V over R, so we're going to have 1 over R times L times d I sub L dt and that's equal to big I. Now I'm going to rewrite d squared I sub L dt squared, just rearrange the terms, plus 1 over R C d I sub L dt plus 1 over L C I sub L, and that's equal to I over L C, like that. Okay, now here this is a non-homogeneous second order differential equation, a little bit more difficult to solve, um, but I want you to notice what we did here is we wrote this in terms of I sub L. So keep in mind, it's sort of like I sub L keeps popping up here and it is, uh, it's an important term. So the secret to solving for this type of circuit here is to keep in mind the importance of I sub L. Now, I wrote this in terms of a current. I could have gone back here and done the same sort of thing that we did before where we write it in terms of the voltage. So I'm going to stop here for the moment and I want to go back. And the reason I want to go back is because I want to show you something here. Um, 
Let's start once again with uh, I sub C plus I sub L plus I sub R uh, equal to big I. Okay, now make the same substitutions that we did before. This is C dV dt uh, plus I sub L plus V over R, and that has to equal uh, big I. Okay, now I sub L can be written in terms of voltage. So dV dt plus 1 over L times the integral of V from 0 to T dt plus I at 0 plus V over R equals I. Okay, now you have seen this type of equation before, at least the left-hand portion of this equation you've seen before. Uh, previously, when you saw it, though, it was equal to zero. And what did we do? You recall what we did was we uh, took this, because it's got a derivative and an integral both in it at the same time, is we took a, another uh, derivative of this. So we took a, a second derivative with respect to time. And when we do that, we end up with C d squared v dt squared plus, this is just v now, uh, plus uh, 1 over r dv dt. And now when we take the derivative of the right-hand side, that turns out to be 0. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange the terms here. Uh, d squared v dt squared plus 1 over r c dv dt. Uh, plus 1 over LC V equals 0. Now, if you recognize that equation, you should just be tickled pink at this point. And the reason is because you know the solutions to that one right there. We could go through the process of solving it, but we've already done it. Uh, this ordinary differential equation right here has three possible solutions. And you know the forms, the general forms of those solutions are going to be V equals A1e to the S1t plus A2e to the S2t, or V equals B1e to the negative alpha t cosine omega sub d t plus B2e to the negative alpha t sine omega sub d t, or v equals d1 t e to the negative alpha t plus d2 e to the negative alpha t. One of those three solutions is the answer to this second order differential equations here. Okay, but, you know, we still have to go through the process of evaluating the coefficients uh, to figure out what's going on here and to get a complete solution. Uh, nevertheless, we've already been through this. You know, you, in, in other words, this is the voltage across all three uh, of these components and the current source as well. So, again, uh, across all of those components there, they have the same voltage. So you solve for the voltage across all of those exactly the same way that we've done before. So you know how to do that. Then, then, once you've got the voltage, you can get I sub L. Because I sub L is just going to be big I minus V over R C D V D T. So what is that? I sub L equals big I minus V over R minus C dV dt. Okay, so, and uh, yep, I did write it correctly. So, uh, the key here is to figuring out voltage so that you can then get I sub L. Okay, and once you've got V, you can also get this right here. What is that? Well, that's the current through the capacitor. What is this term right here? Well, that's the current through the resistor. And what is this term right here? Well, that's just the source. And by the way, after a long period of time, uh, that's going to be the current passing through the inductor. Remember, an inductor, after a long period of time, behaves like a piece of wire. So uh, when the switch is open, all the current begins flowing to the right-hand portion of the circuit here. Uh, let's see. 
uh, you could have some current going that way, some current going this way, some current going that way. But after a long period of time, after there's no more changing current, uh, so you don't have a DI, DT, through the inductor then, uh, all of the current's going to pass through there. This is going to be a piece of wire, and, and it's another short circuit across the inductor. So there is no more current going here, there is no more current going here, all of the current's going here, and at that point, the voltage should be zero. So after a long time, the voltage is going to be zero, and all of the current, big I, is going to go through the inductor. Okay, well what about right at T equals zero? Well, right at t equals zero, imagine that switch was just open and we're talking about the fraction of a second, right after t equals zero, uh, the inductor is going to create a back EMF and not allow any of that current to go through here. Remember, you cannot have an instantaneous change in current for the inductor. So it's going to be zero for that fraction of a second. Now, some of the current could go down here, but if it does, it's going to meet some resistance. However, remember, right at T equals zero plus, this capacitor is uncharged, so the current can go through the capacitor, it'll be a displacement current, but it'll appear as if it's going completely through the capacitor, and uh, it's going to meet zero resistance, at least for that first fraction of a second. And then as it builds up a charge here, then uh, it'll be more and more difficult to get that current to flow through there. So you may start seeing more current over here as well as over here. But after a very long time, and you know, after five tau of time, whatever tau happens to be for this case, uh, all of the current's going to go here. And any charge, uh, potential difference that existed on this capacitor is going to bleed off and also go through here until ultimately all of big I is going through the inductor and the voltage is zero. So right when that thing is open, uh, what, we expect uh, the voltage to also be zero. So at T equals zero, the voltage is going to be zero as well, okay? So you see there's, there's a lot of things going on here. Now, you know you need to find V and after V you can get that but there's more to this that helps you. And uh, I'll show you this and then we'll start working a, a problem or two. Let's say uh, that we have one of these cases here. Let's start with uh, this case right here. That's the uh, overdamped case. Okay, so we're gonna start with the overdamped. And I wanna show you something. I sub L equals big I uh, minus V over R minus C DV DT. Okay, well V for our overdamped case is going to look like this, A1 E to the S1T plus A2 E to the S2T. And then DV DT is going to be, take the derivative of that, A1 S1 e to the s1t plus a2s2e to the s2t, like that. Okay, let's take these two values and plug them in over here for i sub l. Okay, well, first of all, that big i is going to be the same. Minus, now this is going to be v over r, so that's going to be a1 over r e to the s1t. Uh, minus A2 over R E to the S2 T, and then minus C, so C A1 S1 E to the S1 T, minus C A2 S1, I'm sorry, S2 E to the S2 T, like that. Okay, now I want you to notice uh, what we've got here. Uh, these things here are essentially constants. So we've got these constant coefficients, and, and, and you can include the, the negative sign in there if you want to. But here's my point. I could rewrite this uh, just taking all of those constants and calling them some other constant. I 
plus some a1 prime e to the s1t uh, plus a2 prime e to the s2t. So I've got this s2 here and this s2 here, this e to the s2t in both of those cases. Add those two together, it's just going to be a bunch of constants added together, and I'm just calling that A2. The same with the E to the S1T. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just calling it A1. So I've created uh, what looks like the natural response. Now, if I were to go through this same sort of exercise for uh, the underdamped, and say I sub L is equal to I minus V over R minus C, dv dt and use v equals v1 e to the negative alpha t cosine omega sub d t uh, plus v2 e to the minus alpha sine omega sub d t and then take the derivative of that and plug that in as well as this so that we could go through the same general process here's what I would discover or what you would discover, that I is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, I, I sub L is equal to big I plus some coefficient, which we'll call B1 prime, E to the negative alpha T cosine omega sub D T plus some B2 prime, E to the negative alpha T times the sine of omega sub D T. And if I were to do the same sort of thing with uh, the critically damped case and go I sub L equals big I minus V over R minus C dV dt and use V equals D1 T E to the negative alpha T plus D2 E to the negative alpha T and then take the derivative of that as well and then plug those two back in over here, you guess what I'm going to end up with? I'm going to end up with an equation that looks something like this. Big I plus some D1 prime T E to the negative alpha T plus some D2 prime E to the negative alpha T. So you, do you see what's going on here? For each one of these cases, I have a general solution that looks like this. I sub L is going to be whatever big I is, and that's the final current that's going to be passing through, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the final current that's going to be passing through the inductor. So I'm going to put a, a subscript F on there. Plus, each one of these cases is the natural response. So, the natural response. That is a much more general solution for what the current through the inductor is going to look like. It's going to be the final current plus whatever the natural response has to be, and you judge what the natural response is exactly the same way we did for you know, our previous problems that we did. Nevertheless, this is the step response. Now, I will say this, and, and you could go through this if you wanted to the same sort of thing holds for the voltage. The voltage is going to be V final plus the natural response. So in our case, for our specific example that we have here, for the specific example, V final is going to be zero. So uh, that's the reason that we didn't write a V final here because it's zero. So that's the natural response for uh, over, natural response for under, natural response for critical, but regardless of which of those three cases you have, V final is going to be zero for this specific case. Now, you, there may be uh, some circuit that you encounter in the future, perhaps, that that's not the case, that V final is not uh, going to always be that way. Now, that holds for I sub L. But if you were to go through the same exercise to figure out what um, I sub C is, or to figure out what I sub R is, remember uh, I sub R is just going to be V over R. And V 
is given by this expression here. So, and R is a constant, so this boils down to the same sort of thing that I sub R is going to be I final plus whatever its natural response is. So that's the step response for the current. You could do the same sort of thing for the capacitor. Uh, it's equal to C dV dt. Now, the derivative here, uh, you know, C is a constant, but the derivative of V doesn't change the form of, of these. It does change the, the coefficients, but it doesn't truly change the form. In other words, when you take the derivative of this, I'm sorry, when you take the derivative of this, you're going to end up with an e to the s1t multiplied by some constant plus some e to the s2t multiplied by some other constant. And the same down here, if you take the derivative of these terms, you're going to end up with the same sort of thing. The coefficients are going to be different though. And if you do the same thing here, you're going to end up with the same sort of thing. And that's because of the nature of these, uh, the way different uh, derivatives work for these things, for these uh, functions. Okay, so here we can make a general across the board statement here for all of the voltages and all of the currents for this step response then. I, regardless of which I you're talking about, is going to be equal to I final plus the natural response. Now, V also is going to be equal to V final plus the natural response. So regardless of what I you're talking about or what V you're talking about, well, in our case for the parallel, there's only one V, but regardless of what you're talking about, these are going to hold for every step response. Okay. Now what's going to be different in the cases for our circuit is I final. I final for I sub L is just I. I final for I sub C is zero. I final for I sub R is also zero. So that's because all of the current's going to be going down through the inductor after a long time. So you've got to have enough circuits knowledge to figure out what I final is. And you've got to have enough circuits knowledge to figure out what V final is as well. Okay? But after that, you solve for the natural response and you just tack that on and there's your answer for I. Okay, now this will hopefully be a lot more clearer whenever we get into some problems here. So let's see if I can uh, come up with a problem here uh, real fast. I'm 
unstoppable. I'm fearless. I'm fearless. I am fearless. Yeah, you know. I am courageous. I am strong. I'm strong. I am fearless. 